Hello. 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 Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My name is Jason Newland. This is Monday Boring Objects. Monday, Monday Boring Objects. One day I'll actually come up with a really good jingle. If I put a bit more effort in, maybe. If I put some effort in, possibly. So, yeah, this is Monday's... Is it Monday Boring Objects or Monday's Boring Objects? Just Monday Boring Objects, I don't care. Monday's Monday. So, the idea behind these regular Monday podcasts is... I pick a subject, random, it's a subject or an object, basically, you know, it could be, um, I don't know, it could be a screwdriver, or it could be weddings, you know, weddings aren't an object, are they, well, kind of a subject, or it could be, uh, English literature. You see what I mean? It can be just a thing, really. It could even be a person. I could talk about Michael Jackson. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Michael Jackson. I'm going to talk about... That's going to be my boring objects today. Monday boring objects. Michael Jackson. Um, because I'm, I've always been a big fan of Michael Jackson, and before I start this, I am not going to be saying anything controversial or referring to any controversy or accusations that he might have had during his lifetime or since. Uh, this is going to be from a fan uh, perspective. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, besides, I don't, I don't want to get into stuff like that. These, these recordings, at the very least, you know, I try and make them as light-hearted as possible. You know, occasionally, you know, well, I'll delve into some serious stuff, but not too often. So, before I proceed with this lecture, <laughs> I am just let you know there is a Facebook group that I, I say I run, actually Molly runs it, Molly the boss runs it, but it's my Facebook group, it's called Jason Newland's Boring Group, it's really for the, it's a fan group I guess, let's just use that word, I don't like the word very much, but it's for people that really like what I do, it's not for the casual listener, it's for the, the you know, pe- just people that really like what I do. And the benefits of being in the group, other than getting to maybe meet like-minded people, I post my stuff on there. I also post personal pictures, like of of Vinny, rather, sorry, blimey. Uh, Pictures of Vinny or videos of Vinny. Uh, I might do the occasional video myself. And also, I ask questions. So it's a place where you can answer questions uh, on a regular basis. On a Wednesday, I normally post a questionnaire or a question two days before Friday's Q&A Friday. So I basically just say, is there any questions for Q&A Friday? (laughs) That was kind of obvious, wasn't it? So, and then... Whatever questions I get over the next two days, I will then answer those questions on the Friday. So, and it's also a place where you can post post uh, messages and comments about how wonderful I am. Because 
I can't get enough of that. I don't get enough of it. I hardly get any of it. Although I did have a nice message. What did I have a minute? Let's, let me read out a nice message I got it on the group. What's the name of the group again? Jason. Oh, Newland, that's it. I got a lovely message. Where was it? Where was it? I can't find it. Just, uh, da, 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 da. oh, okay. This is from Claire. Hi, well, my eyesight needs checking. Hi, Jason. I do the voice. Hi, Jason. Just wanted to say how much I appreciate and love your let me bore you to sleeps. I just love your ramblings. Ramblings? What are you talking about ramblings? Everything I say is, I, I spend hours writing this stuff and going over it and going over it, editing it until it's the perfect speech. Ramblings. <laughs> uh, I just love your ramblings and have been listening to you since around two, 20,214. That's the number. So you've been listening from the future. I think you meant to say 2021. Or 2014. I'm guessing 2021. Because I wasn't doing the Let Me Boy to Sleep in 2014. I was doing other stuff. But I didn't start the Let Me Boy to Sleep till 2018. So. Uh, and then there's a some information about some coffee uh some sweetener and stuff so i will reply to that as well so um thank you it's a lovely message thank you very much i'm sure i got another message somewhere but i can't find it i can't find it i don't know where it is unless it was posted uh da -da 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 -da. <sighs> No, I can't find it. Also, say hi to Paul. Thanks for your kind PayPal gift. Nope, can't find it. Maybe there wasn't. Nope, I think that was it. So, get on with the recording, and then shall we? So to start with, I don't know if per chance I have already previously made a recording, uh, a boring recording about Michael Jackson, then I'm not sorry. <laughs> And here's another one, basically. I don't, I can't keep track of everything I do or everything I've done because there are thousands of recordings. Um, literally thousands. Right now, just for the Let Me Boy to Sleep since 2018, I've done 1,220 different recordings. So. That's just for those ones without all the other stuff I've done. Blimey. I've been pretty good though, doing them regularly. Just put water. Ugh. I spill water just on my top. It looks like I'm lactating. I like that. <laughs> Make me feel good. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Made me feel feminine. Ooh. I do get... Okay. I'll, I'll move away from my nipples. So, I... I'm trying to think when I first really discovered Michael Jackson. Hmm. 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 
I think I probably grew up listening to him. But not uh, knowing the songs, like Blame It On The Boogie and... And he was in The Wiz. I probably saw that. And... I mean, I have seen it, but I possibly saw it when I was a kid. I don't remember. I didn't have any of the albums. I didn't have any Michael Jackson albums when I was a kid. You know, when I was, like, young. But I would have heard him on the radio. And I would have heard, heard his latest songs on the radio from an early age. And probably his videos on Top of the Pops. Because I, I watched Top of the Pops. For, well, it's not on anymore. But right from when it started. Not when it started because I wasn't alive. Probably from the late 70s all the way through to kind of when it stopped, I suppose. Although I didn't watch it quite as regularly as I had done in the past. But I, I used to definitely watch the Christmas edition. That was one of my favourite things about Christmas. I think they used to have the Queen's speech first and then Top of the Pops, if I remember correctly. So, oh, itchy back. Yeah, I've got kind of vague memories of the some of the songs. I mean, I know them really well now because I've been listening to them for decades and decades. But whether or not I listened to them when I was a kid, I don't know. But I'm, I'm pretty certain I didn't have any albums when I was very young. But... Uh, I do probably my first real real memory of Michael Jackson was when he brought out Thriller because that was there was such a buzz such a buzz in the air and it was the most talked about album of the year I mean it was the most successful album I think of all time and at that time it was as well it kind of broke all the records and um, the top movie of the year was probably E.T. if I remember rightly I didn't don't remember at the time but Michael Jackson also did he did a, an album for E.T. did you know that? he did E.T. go home uh, uh, uh. he did he did an album for E.T. I don't know if it was... I don't think it was the E... I think it was the E.T. Storybook or something it was called. It wasn't... I don't think his songs were in the actual movie. Maybe they were. Maybe they were. I haven't seen that movie for a long time. So... I remember going to see it. And I was determined... I went with my family. And I was determined I ain't going to cry. Because everyone's saying, are you going to cry? I said, no, I ain't going to cry. I cried. I did. It's the only time I ever cried. I know there was one time when I was an adult and I was in the back row with my girlfriend and we were getting on really well and unfortunately she sneezed. Yeah. That made me cry. So, ever since then I've trimmed. So, I think it's... Yeah, I think he did that. I don't know how popular the album was for the E.T. thing. Because I would say, fair enough, it's pretty... I think it's pretty certain that everything and anything would have been eclipsed by Thriller, the album. Now, I didn't own Thriller. But I knew all the songs because they were being played continuously.
continuously on the radio, like all the time. And because he released so many songs off of the album as individual singles, I got to know all the singles pretty much. Because, you know, it, sometimes you, I don't know, in the past I've bought an album, I've, I've heard maybe the first song or maybe the first two songs from a, an artist, a singer, and I'm thinking, ooh, I'm going to buy the album. I don't always go, ooh, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I go, ah. Sometimes I don't even make a noise. It really depends. Depends what year it was. I think uh, 1992 I decided to make no noises before buying albums. What am I talking about? So I... It was a bit awkward because I remember I bought it and... The lady on the cashier, you know, who I bought the album from in HMV... Uh, sort of looked at me and said, like, why didn't you, why didn't you say thank you? I said, well, I'm trying not to make noises this year. She said, oh, are you one of those people that make weird noises before buying albums? I said, yeah. And I was a bit worried that I might make a weird noise during or even after buying it. She said, I fully understand. Um, can I have your telephone number? Maybe we can go out on a date and perhaps get married. I said, no, I'm busy. I'm busy, I've got to get home to listen to this album. She said, are you really going to give up this? I mean, this is an opportunity for you to fall in love and we could have kids and get a mortgage and you can work for the next 45 years to pay off a mortgage and then I'll take half. <laughs> no, she didn't say that, um, which would have put me off probably. She said, uh, she didn't say anything, none of that happened. So I said, hey, she said, what? She said, I said, hey, I want a Michael Jackson album. Which one? So I didn't know there's more than one. I thought, you know, Thriller was the first one. Because I knew it'd been the Jackson 5, or the Jacksons, the Jackson 5, both. They were different, called different things at different times. I didn't know you'd already had his own solo albums previously. It had Ben. He's also had uh, Off the Wall. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, a thriller one, obviously. That's the one I want. <laughs> and she said, um, I don't think the EE -E really started until bad. And that's not happened yet. I said, oh, okay. I've got to stop then. See, that's why I don't want to make the noises. She said, yeah, okay. And I didn't, but I didn't actually buy the album. I did buy the album in the future, but at that time, I didn't buy the album. I don't know why. I think it's because it was over, a bit too condensed, a bit too overkill, possibly too much. Always being played, one of his songs constantly and the album was being advertised all, all the time on TV and we only had one and a half channels back then I also remember the they played the thriller video for the first time in this country on channel 4 and it was on about 10 o'clock at night and me and my brothers was excited to watch it. Partly, well, because it was so hyped. It wasn't just that. It was that the person that directed the video was the same person that directed, created the uh, American Werewolf in London. So those same special effects were being used and they were really advanced techniques it was the first werewolf movie where it was really done well well they did it as well as they could at that time you know it was like new techniques and that so michael jackson had used him michael landis is it michael landis anyway the um 
we were all a big fan of American Werewolf in London. Loved that film. I still do. It's probably my, one of my favourite horror movies ever. Because it was funny. I like humour with my massacres. <laughs> I like their humour. And it was funny all the way through. Okay, not every part was funny. Yeah, some parts weren't. Uh, so yeah, I... Oh, there was a really bad... They did American Werewolf in Paris, which was just nothing to do with the original movie. Nothing. Nothing. Like, nothing. And I just couldn't believe that they... I mean, I watched it. And it had, I think it had some raunchy bits, so I watched it many times, probably more than the original one. But, you know, I was a teenager and I liked werewolves. Yep. Yeah. So I was kind of like quite excited about how the thriller video was going to be. I knew the song, everyone knew the song. Because this is thriller. Three, nine, me, 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 me. But because it hadn't actually been officially released, you know, the radio stations were playing all the songs from the album. And that was kind of exciting. It was a landmark thing, you know, only ever going to happen once in history, you know. The, the first time that Thriller was played, it's... This is one of those things like it might not be that exciting for people that listen and hear about it thinking, oh, why were you excited about that? But I get excited when I see more than three ladybirds together. So, you know, or ladybugs, if you want to call them that. My friend's got, it's a weird thing. She's got ladybirds come into her flat. And they congregate at the same part of the wall every year. They just come in. Bearing in mind it's October and there are no ladybirds outside. So they come in and they kind of just hang out. I've never had... I think I might have had one ladybird indoors ever in my entire life. Very just like she doesn't like them. I said, but they're beautiful. But I don't like them, she says. That's exactly how she sounds. I don't like them. I said, but they're beautiful. They're good luck. They bring you good luck. Then she, she pointed out all the stuff that's happened in the last year, and I thought, okay, fair enough. They might not be good luck, but they are still beautiful. I've just got this fondness for ladybirds. It's something going back to the middle 70s when there was, the newspapers were calling it a plague of ladybirds and there was billions of the things in this country. But I loved them. And I never got bit by one ever. They loved me, I loved them. And we used to get completely covered. Completely covered and it was wonderful. Absolutely loved them. <sighs> always have. Always will. But I also used to eat daddy long legs. So, you know, I'm not sure how, how good my uh, decision making was back then. I was only like five or four or five. I remember my brother, we came, because he used to live in this big tower block, and I came downstairs once into the, like, the front or the back, I don't know, whichever way we were going, out of, you know, out of the block of flats. And my oldest brother was there with some of his friends, and he said, oh, Jay, called me, he said, oh, pick him up, pick up the bee. I said, no, he'll sting me. I said, no, he can't sting you, he's dead. So I, I picked him up. And I got stung. That's the whole story, really. But I don't think I ever trusted him again. 
I find it hard to trust anyone that's near a bee. Especially if they tell me to pick it up. Don't worry, it won't sting you. No, don't trust them anymore. Ruined my trust with bees. Near tower blocks. I wonder if that tower block's still there. I wonder. Oh, Vinny wants to cuddle now. You want to cuddle? Aww. So I... Trying to think, I don't know what day of the week the thriller video was released on Channel 4. I got this idea that maybe it was like a Tuesday. I don't know why, but I just had this feeling that it was like quite early in the week. And it was just as good as I thought it would be. It was just brilliant. I loved it. Absolutely loved every second of it. It lasted for, I don't know, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. And then I went to bed. Because this is real life, real life. I used to do that with girls sometimes. Like if I was trying to chat up a girl when I was a kid, I'd be like, I put my hands on their shoulders and start dancing like in a video. Like, it's close to midnight. And like, yeah, I used to do that. Sometimes they'd laugh. Sometimes they'd tell me to go away. Sometimes they'd call the police. I mean, it depends. I don't, I don't do it anymore. I haven't done it for weeks. So I remember that. I'm trying to think what other things Michael Jackson... That's how he's touched me or my life, rather. Um, the next time I really, really remember Michael Jackson was 1987. 1986, 1987, 1987, yeah, yeah, 1987, so I, that's when he released Bad, 1987, and I, when I was living above the chip shop, the main I had some albums on tape, like tape record tape, you know, tape tapes that you put into a tape recorder. Not tape that was used to uh, I don't know, tape something together. So I'm trying to think of the albums I had. I had Two Stevie Wonder albums. No. I had one Steve... No. I had one and then I got another one. So I had two Stevie Wonder albums. I had the... Born... Oh, blimey. It's the one with Overjoyed on. Overjoyed. I've been building my castle of love. That one. Oh, wow, it's just gone out of my head. And I know that, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. And then the second one, which was what he released in 87, Stevie Wonder, which is called Characters. So in, what was the first? What was the, in... Blimey, it'll come to me. So I had those two albums that I used to listen to. That was one of the songs <laughs> off of the characters from Stevie Wonder. 
I had George Michael's Faith. Uh, I had Madonna's three albums that she'd pr- produced up to that point, including Blue, True Blue, and the other two albums she'd previously released. Uh, and I had Michael Jackson's Off the Wall. And I had Thriller. I must have had Thriller. Maybe I didn't have Thriller. Seems weird. Why wouldn't I have Thriller? But I definitely had Off the Wall and I had Bad. Those were the two main ones that I listened to. Off the Off the Wall and Bad. Loved bad, but I also loved Off the Wall because I'd never heard it before until I bought it. I must have had Thriller as well, surely. I'm trying to think of any other um, wow, I can't think. Uh, I don't know. But they were the main albums that I was listening to. Off the Wall and Bad. And I would listen to them constantly when I was at home. You know, when I, when I wasn't at work. I'd be upstairs listening to them on repeat, basically. And... Yeah, I just fell in love. I just, just, I fell more in love with Michael Jackson during that period, and than I had when I was younger. It's just by far my favourite singer. And then, when I, there was times when I, because I was working like six days a week, on a Sunday I kind of crash a little bit I'd get up maybe get a buy a sandwich at the sandwich shop perhaps uh, or just get some newspapers read the newspapers and then I'll just go back and lie down on the bed I think at this time I just had a uh, like a not an actual bed frame just the bed itself on the floor and I'd have the recorder the tape player just next to the bed and I don't know maybe a bottle of water or something bottle of coke I'd got no idea whatever I was drinking and I'd just be going to sleep I'd spend all day pretty much in bed on a Sunday I was 16 and yeah I I just didn't have there was nothing to do I do you know this is a back in 1987 86 87 there wasn't anything really to do on a Sunday Every, everything's closed no shops were open apart from the news agents that were open in the morning then they closed the off license opened during the like the off license the the pub times the pubs only opened for a little bit in the morning till like lunchtime or whatever from about 11 till 1 something like that then it opened again in the evening for about 4 hours so everything on Sundays were very much the whole country kind of closed down a little bit on a Sunday back then and I lived in this little town where there was no, there's no way out. <laughs> I don't think they had any trains travel on a Sunday. I don't even think there was a bus service on a Sunday either. I might be exaggerating this one, but it, it was kind of stuck, stuck there. 
this is a little bit boring. And then when I moved out of there, I asked my work colleague to look after my stuff because I had quite a few tapes. If I remember right, yeah, I had a lot of tapes actually. I think I'd accrued a bunch of tapes, albums and stuff. I asked her to look after them. Yeah, I asked her to look after them for me and I never saw them again. And then oh, I've got an itchy, itchy leg. Oh. Then I moved into my dad's for a little while. I don't remember. At that period, I don't remember really buying any or listening to any music necessarily but I was working in a co-op and one of the ladies that worked there she was just coming up to retirement and apparently I helped her retirement become more special she was like you know she was happy to retire but even more happier to not have to work with me anymore so I thought that was nice and uh, she she gave me an album which was the Michael Jackson Thriller album, but on vinyl. I don't know why she gave it to me, but she did. Something about, you know, making help, help her to appreciate how lucky she is to be getting out of that job. And so I had that album. And then what I did next is I lived up above moved out of my dad's and I lived up above the co-op where I was working and I started spending time with uh, a lady who I ended up dating actually like years later and that was a time when I bought an album and it was Michael Jackson slash the Jackson 5. In fact, it was the Jacksons. It wasn't just Michael Jackson, I think. It was the Jacksons, but it might have been both. And it was a mix, like a mega mix. And it was like every single one of his songs all kind of mixed together. I've not been able to find it anywhere. I've looked online. It's almost like it didn't exist. But it did exist because I used to own it. It's a bit like... It's something I just can't prove. Similar to like... I can't prove that I ever had a girlfriend. I did. But I can't prove it. I mean, I could, I could point you towards someone that I dated. But they won't admit to it. They won't tell you I did. So can't prove that I'm not a virgin but mind you it's been so long I think I think virginity comes back again doesn't it if you leave it too long so yeah everything's healed over so <laughs> I I think that album the mix was one of my favourite albums ever I just loved listening to all these old songs from the 70s absolutely loved it you know get back get me back abc ben um do you ever want someone do you ever want something you know you shouldn't have but the more you want it the more you can have it the more you want it and then one day you get it it just feels so good to you ain't no sunshine when she's gone there's that one then um Rockin' Robin Rockin' Robin and what other ones I Want You Back Love Makes the World Go Round Um 
I can't remember, but it was lots of songs. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Blame it on the boogie, probably, perhaps. And I don't know what happened to that album. I don't, I don't know if it was a vinyl album or a tape recorder. I don't rightly remember. If it was a vinyl, then I must have owned a record player in order to play it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got a vinyl version of the album. But knowing how I spent most of my life until really late 90s, I was on tape. I mean, I've been through periods when I did buy vinyl, but it was mainly comedy albums. Because a lot of them were on vinyl. Especially the second-hand ones. Or are we supposed to say pre-loved now? Yeah, okay. Pre-loved. No, second-hand. And they were really old ones, like of like Richard Pryor... Uh, I don't know what's his name Bill Cosby Cheech and Chong Cheech and Chong Chong and Cheech I'm trying to think of some other ones that I had albums like that were old some of the really old ones from the 60s and the 70s I think I had a, I died different. I did. I had Monty Python's Life of Brian, an album. So that was funny. But I also had quite a few tapes of albums that I used to buy, like, and I also used to buy videos as well. So, but of stand up comedy, American and English. So I had Chubby Brown, I had Bernard Manning, but I also had Emo Phillips, Steve Martin, uh, Robin Williams, George Carlin, all, all kinds of stuff. But that's that's a different boring objects uh, <laughs> recording, I guess. And then. Yeah, that was kind of my little period when I absolutely loved that album. And I don't think I had bad anymore because someone else, they were looking after it and I didn't, I'm not sure if I repurchased it. I might have done. Knowing me, I probably did because I loved the album so much. And then in 1988... We're in 1988 now. When... 1988, later in the year, when I turned 18, for a birthday present, I got given tickets to go and see Michael Jackson in concert at Wembley. With my cousin. And... I never went... Because I'd just started a new job. I'd literally turned 18. I was going to go, but... As soon as I turned 18, I applied. I mean, literally, practically on the day. I applied for a job in a factory. That you had to be 18 to work at. But it was one of the best jobs in town. Outside of working on the docks. So I applied and I got a job pretty quick and the tickets were f probably for probably about five weeks away from when I got the yeah that's it so they're probably four weeks away maybe so it turned out that I would have to have a day off in the second week first or second week of actually working And I was too scared. 
to take time off. Because, you know, I've always been dedicated to my work. Well, you know, sort of. A little bit. I just got the job. I couldn't, can't take time off. But, you know, if I was a little bit older, I could have just said to him, look, I've got tickets to go and see Michael Jackson. I need that day off. I can start work after that if you want, if you want to wait until I, you know, or I could work in lieu of that day or whatever, but, you know, and I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure most human beings at that time, bearing in mind Michael Jackson was the biggest star in the whole wide world, they probably would have like said, well, maybe, I think, that's okay, JJ. You go watch, you go watch the, f- go watch Michael Jackson. Don't worry about us. It's only your job. Don't worry. You go, you go watch Michael Jackson. That's okay. And it would be fine. And hopefully I'd have a job. And I thought about skiving, pretending. Then I was worried. What if, what if I was filmed? You know, maybe they did a, you know, a filming of it and it was on TV and you saw me there. And out of like, you know, 80,000 people that was there, probably not going to see my face. So I didn't go. It was he? I mean, I got bought the tickets because I was such a big Michael Jackson fan, and no, it didn't go. That was one of my little, probably one of my little regrets. Yeah. To say I was a little Michael, I was, a, I was. By that point, I was such a Michael Jackson fan. I mean, really bad was the album that got me. Way more than Thriller. I love Thriller, but I still prefer Bad. I do, and I still prefer Off the Wall to Thriller. It's weird. It's it's a great album, obviously, because it's hugely successful, but... I think I prefer all of Michael Jackson's other albums over Thriller. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just... Yeah, I don't know why. So there was nothing after Bad for a little while. And I still listen to his music... Uh, late 80s there was one time I remember when I had lost my job or I walked out because I couldn't couldn't work there anymore and I didn't know what I was going to do but basically I'd worked all the way through Christmas in this bar job and they said to me that they accused me of stealing basically in so many words they said there's money short from the till again you need to come in tomorrow for training we're going to retrain you I said I can't come in tomorrow because it's New Year's Day I've worked all through Christmas and I've got New Year's Day dinner with my family it's the only time I'm going to see my nan and my family you know because I've not seen them all through Christmas because I've been working and they said if you don't come in don't turn up I said alright see you then and that was the end of that. But I didn't realise they were going to take that as a sign of guilt, which it wasn't. Oh well. So I I went through a period where I didn't have anything. I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And... I don't know what on earth. Oh yeah, so I went like a, a week or two. I didn't have any money. I was still living in this place. And I really was struggling. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
was looking for work. And I remember walking, I think it was on the pier, and I was sing I kept I was singing to myself, um, blame it on the boogie. Don't blame it on the sunshine, don't blame it on the moonlight. I kept singing that to myself and I don't know why. But it it somehow comforted me. Comforted me. It felt, made me I just calmed my mind. But I still didn't know what to do. What am I gonna do? Got no job, got blah 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 blah. And everything worked out in the end, so it's, you know, it's all right. But I just remember that, singing that song out loud. Especially, I was on the pier, it was cold, there was no one else around, so I could just sing it. And it really helped. And then... I don't think Michael Jackson affected my life anymore for that little period. I don't remember even listening to him during 1989. I probably did, but I don't remember it. 1990, I don't remember. But 1991... Well, that's a different matter because that's when he brought out Dangerous. Dangerous. I loved that album. I bought it and I loved every single song. I'd already probably heard. I think it was Black and White was the first al song off the album. So I'd already heard that song. But there was a lot of songs I'd not heard. And I just... I adored the album. It honestly just couldn't get enough of it. So I was listening to that non-stop when I could. And I got this memory of kind of... December 1991 so I've been doing comedy I moved to London in January 91 to pursue a career as a stand up comedian mm -mm -mm. and by the end of the year I'd gone through a few jobs and I was currently had no money coming in and a a friend of mine who was how did I even know him? How did I know him? I think he was a regular at the comedy club I used to go to regularly. He was a regular at the my regular. And he asked me Yeah, he gave me a job like temporarily over the Christmas period, over like December, maybe into January, but just for a few weeks, at the Elephant and Castle, selling, basically he had a record shop inside the Elephant and Castle shopping centre. He gave me a stall, like a couple of tables, outside the front, because there was also like a market out there as well. And I was selling all his old stock of tapes that he, need, he just wanted to get rid of. He had a huge stock of stuff in the basement or wherever it was that stuff was stored. And I was free. Oh, I was so cold. But I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And it was just fun. That was a really good December. One of my best Decembers ever. I just remember listening to Dangerous on the way there. On the way back. I just listened to it. I just loved loved that album so much. And that was a weird, kind of a weird time. 
because we also he started a comedy club called the Charlie Chaplin Comedy Club at the Charlie Chaplin pub which was next door to the um, Elephant and Castle shopping centre and it was upstairs and we we used to yeah we'd go and uh, stand outside the tube station handing out leaflets and every it's really weird because we, we did it most days for like you know just for a couple of hours and every other day the tube station would get shut down because of a a scare a like a a potential emergency thing that used to happen a lot in the 90s and it was just weird sometimes we get a captive audience because there'd be all these people standing outside the railings down so they couldn't get in and we'd be, we'd be like there with little leaflets saying uh, do you want to come to the comedy club but no one was really in the mood for humour to be fair but it was we got an audience and yeah just just the Charlie Chaplin was that kind of our local pub after we finished work and we'd go in there and that was his local anyway because that he, I don't know how long he'd had that shop for but quite a, quite a while I'm guessing yeah I got good memories of that there was a bunch of girls used to hang around as well and there was a couple of lads that or at least one maybe two lads that worked in the shop with my friend he had a cub going there on a Saturday and during the holidays and got on well with them so yeah it was a really really nice time yeah yeah it was one of my favourite times of the 90s I'll be honest that one month I was getting paid I don't know not a lot like 20 quid a day or something cash in hand and a travel card probably cost me 250 I don't know if he bought me lunch he probably did and that was it it was just nice such a yeah yeah it's good I dated one girl And then I asked her sister out and we had like a date in the pub. That didn't go so well because her boyfriend came in. And then there was another another female there who I got on really well with. And a few months later, like that's the next summer, I came and visited my friend and she was around and we kind of hooked up and uh, spent the day together. That was nice. I just remember it was just a really, really chilled out period, you know, that. But it's just the overarching Michael Jackson dangerous album was there. And I just like, oh, you know. And then... What, 91, I was still listening to Dangerous, 92. I was, at this point, I was probably listening to all three albums. The Off The Wall, no, four albums. Off The Wall, Thriller, Bad and Dangerous. So I had all four of those albums I'd listened to during that period. And also went through a period of really... Well, kind of discovering Bob Dylan in probably a ninety-two. I say discovering because obviously he had already been quite established in the music industry for about fifty years. But I, I kind of knew who I knew who he was, and I'd heard some of his stuff, and I wanted to listen you know I thought I'll get his greatest hits which I did 
and the whole kind of the times are changing and what is it that line if you if you if you can't what is it if you can't um if you can't join with us get out of the way kind of uh about yeah, so it was, it was pretty, that was kind of the the our idea of the the sentence he said. If you can't if you can't be part of what we're doing, then you need to get out of the way. Um, but it was worded differently in song format. If you can't get out of the way, yeah, something like that, which is quite a good impression. And then I fell in love with Blood on the Tracks. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure when that happened. But blimey. Blood on the Tracks was one of my favouritest, still is one of my favouritest albums of ever. And you may say, but that's not Michael Jackson. I didn't say it was. I loved Blood on the Tracks, Bob Dylan. Lee, 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 think about something else to see. I know that wasn't on the album, but I liked a few of his albums. I've, I've, I, I had quite a few of his albums at one point. So, Michael Jackson. So, the next really thing that I remember about Michael, as far as how my life was affected by him or his music would probably be just going through the years 93 94 95 so 1995 is the next thing so i'm still listening to his music and he brings out history history and again, I remember putting it in my head, putting it in my headphones, putting it into the tape recorder with my headphones on, walking to work, listening to. I might, I don't know if it, was I walking to work or I, I might have gone up to the shops, bought it, and then come back, and then headed off somewhere else. It might have been work. listening to yeah listening to it for the first time I was like wow I mean the first side is all his old songs anyway but the new you know the new album the new the second side which is all his new songs just again I loved every single one every single one it just, yeah. And my memory really, there's a couple of memories I've got. One was, I think it was 1996, was when Michael Jackson was appearing on the, it was a music award show in the UK, and the pulp, pulp lead singer, got on stage and basically mocked him while he was on stage, mocked Michael Jackson while he was on stage. So that that didn't go down too well. I think he got arrested and then released. Or did he just, did he get put his pants down or something? I don't know, something like that. But my memory really of the history period was singing the song You Are Not Alone. You are not alone. I am here with you. That one. Um, Because I was was dating someone who had a kid. And whenever I sung to the... It was a baby. I don't know. Still a baby. Like literally six, seven months old, eight months old or something. And whenever I, I sung, the baby stopped 
crying. And it was like quite a close bond between me and the baby. And, and just like loved, he loved listening to me singing. He didn't have a lot of choice, to be fair. You know what I mean? I was holding him and he couldn't get away. But I used to sing to him and he just seemed to like it. And he'd fall asleep. Now, I don't know, because I told Vinny this story and he said, do you ever think that maybe he was pretending to be asleep just so he'd stop singing? Which I found a little bit rude. A little bit rude to hear that, but... You know, it's possible, but he seemed to like my singing. And back in them days, I could sing Michael Jackson's songs quite well. I had the ability to sing quite high. And yeah, I was... Yeah, I was a pretty good, pretty good singer back then. Those days are well and truly gone, my friend. But I did, I used to have a quite good singing voice. But to be fair, I was, I was only... Yeah, I was only 25, so I hadn't really gone through puberty then. Yet. I didn't have until I was about 46... I'm trying to think what else. So 96. I was just still listening to his music. Whenever I did a karaoke. If I got an opportunity to do karaoke. I would probably sing a Michael Jackson song. If I could. Either Michael Jackson. Elvis Presley. Or the Beatles. I used to quite like singing Fool on the Hill. Because... I was talk. I was singing about myself, because I kind of felt like I was the fool on the hill. Day after day, alone on a hill. And I kind of, I was, yeah. I used to get slightly emotional singing that about myself. No, I don't think anyone realised that I was. Well, because they couldn't read my mind, I suppose. Couldn't, didn't know why I was singing it. Although, it was quite often at the end of night, on a Wednesday night. Maybe at the weekend as well. And there'd be hardly anyone left. Because I'd leave really late, like early hours. And sometimes I'd just walk home all the way through Whitechapel to Stratford. From, yeah, it was probably good hour and a half walk but I don't know just it was alright uh, there was it was a friend I used to walk with sometimes because he also lived didn't live too far away from where I lived I mean, why we did just didn't get a taxi and share the fee or the cost I don't know I think it was because we were both probably I don't know if I was drinking but he was he was drinking so maybe like just to like to walk it off you know and so 95 96 97 98 99 2000 right the next album that he released, I actually, this is weird, I started working at Churchill in September to 90, yeah, 2001. And the trainer was obsessed with Michael Jackson. Absolutely loved. It. And so that was like, wow. He was also used to go boxing as well. So there's two things we had in common. Well, I didn't go boxing, but I loved boxing. At the time, I, I mean, I've done boxing since, but I wasn't sort of young doing it. He was, he was still probably in his twenties. Yeah, he would have been probably twenty-five or something. And he really loved Michael Jackson. And around that time is when Michael Jackson released his next album, which was called Invincible. Now, I liked it. 
it wasn't the same. I mean, none of his albums are the same, really. But it was different from his other albums, and it wasn't as successful, nowhere near as, success, as successful as his previous albums. But I still loved it. I listened, I listened to it constantly. And then I kind of went off it a bit. And I went back to listen to Off the Wall and Bad. And then I came back to Invincible and I just realised how good it was. It was just a really good album. So that was what, 2001, 2002. I was listening to the album all the way through the 2000s really. As well as all his other albums. And then, is it 2009, he he left. I mean, he was he had to come back, not come back, but he had a, like a, was it when, wasn't Wembley Arena, was it? It was the, was it the O2? He was going to do like, sort of like a whole month at the, because the O2, you know, it used to be called the Millennium Dome. Did you know that? The O2 used to be called the Millennium... That was a millenn- The Millennium Dome was one of the most expensive buildings in this country's history. And it was basically built to celebrate the new millennium, which was coming. So they'd been building it, and they spent like 500 million, something like really huge amounts of money, putting this thing together. And and they launched it ready for 2000, you know, the, the new millennium. And I went to see it. I actually knew someone who he was best friends. I think he, sometimes he did a shift, but he was, be, he was really close friends with one of the waiters. So he'd be in and out quite a lot. But he worked at the Millennium Dome. He worked at... When they launched it, he was there. Not quite sure what he did, but he had all these uh, comp tickets that he was giving away. So he gave me a couple of tickets. And it was for a bank holiday Monday. Well, I don't think it that bit. I think it was... I don't know if it was the opening day. Probably not. But he. it was kind of the opening week or period, you know, that weekend, I think. And I didn't have anyone to take, really. You know, if I had my time over again, I I probably would have done it a little bit different. I wouldn't have gone. (laughs) No, I I went with someone I met on a Saturday night and said, do you want to go into the Millennium Dome? And she wanted to, so I said, okay, cool. And picked me up. I said, have you got a car first? She said, yeah. No, she hadn't. Uh, so we just went there, and it was a nice day. I was, there was all these trampezi, trampoline, or I don't know what they were called, but they were all on these wires and strings, and it was it was a huge, huge thing. And there was, I think there was like a human body or a brain or something you could go inside, and there was, I didn't really feel that they were using the space as best as they could have done but it was a new thing and it yeah it was it was a it was all right it was it was quite nice it was an event and there was a mcdonald's there and it was the first time i'd ever had a mcflurry i don't know if they were just new or I just never had one before, but I think they were new. They were like a new thing. McFlurries. And I think that's then got turned into the O2 arena where loads of sporting events. You know, so I guess they could start making the money back. I'm pretty sure, unless it was going to be Wembley, but I don't think that Wembley could have put on like a whole month of concerts for one person 
because they're booked years in advance. But the Millennium Dome, or O2, was relatively new. Relatively. I don't know. I'm percentage-wise making this up probably 60%. And then... I didn't buy any tickets to go and see him. I didn't really... I mean, this is the early two... Fa- yeah, I, I, I couldn't... I couldn't have done it if I'd wanted to. I couldn't have gone into a busy place. Those days were over for me, going into, like, really crowded places and stuff. So... I didn't really want to go... I kind of, yeah, I think I missed, probably, I'd say I missed my opportunity to see him. But obviously, you could say, obviously I have, but I mean, at the time, probably the best time to go and see him, I would say probably during the bad tour. Personally, I think, because of the, because I just love the album so much. And then, then he was gone. And to this day, I'm talking like regularly throughout the week, I still listen to his albums. I listen to Off the Wall, I listen to Bad. I don't listen to Thriller very often. Even now, don't listen to it too often. Um, I listen, I don't listen to Invincible very often, but I do like listening to Dangerous, and I listen to History, but there's a couple of other albums that I discovered is Ben, now I didn't realise that he had a, uh, like a, a solo album called Ben, I'd heard of the song, you know, Ben, the two of us, need look no more. That one. But I didn't know it was an album. And I love that album. Again, I love every single song on that album. So, yeah, that's one of my favourite albums of all of his. And there was another one. But I don't know. I think it was... uh, Forever Michael or something. So that was another one. And there was loads of songs on there that I'd heard before. So it's now kind of got to the point where I don't think there's a song that he recorded that I've not heard. I mean, I even like so much stuff he did with the Jacksons that is almost not forgotten, but it's been eclipsed by his solo career that he did like later on like it's all the early stuff you know like blame it on the boogie and you know all the abc and all that stuff that was rocking robbie and all that but in the later years around the same time as when he did off the wall between off the wall and thriller he did the like can you feel it can you feel it can you feel it that one and it's amazing. There's some of really good songs. And I know it's with his brothers. But it was still with him. You know? It was... I mean, Off the Wall could have been a Jackson's album. To be fair. Because it still sounded like they were in the background. You know, there ain't anybody that I ever knew. do 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 And I'm not sure, maybe they were in the background. That's what it sounded like to me. That he, you know, it it did really break away. I love Off The Wall. But he could have done that with the Jacksons. And it still would have been a great album. And it would have been, no one would have batted an eyelid. If you just said, the new Jacksons album, Off The Wall. And just released it exactly as it was. Oh, I can hear Tito. 
Oh, Jermaine's in good form on this one. You don't know, do you? It's, it's, I think it's only when he moved to Thriller, that's when he realised that was him. For me, that was like completely Michael Jackson. There was no, no Jackson's influence on that one. Maybe that's why, uh, in a way, that was kind of, for me, the first one he did where he was completely himself. And then bad, it kind of established himself as being, uh, having that style. So th with Thriller, he established himself as a solo artist, like completely solo. Off the wall, he was still doing stuff with the Jacksons. The thriller, that was it. Jacksons was done. I think they had a reunion, but it was definitely Michael on its own. And then with Bad, that was... I would say that was kind of like his clowning, clowning, his crowning glory. Even though Bad was more, uh, Thriller was more successful and his biggest album he ever had. I just think Bad was better. A better album. More energy. Uh, just, it probably just right for me at that time. You know, I was, what was I, 17. It was full of energy, the, the whole album pretty much. Uh, it was great. It was just perfect. It's like one of the per most perfect albums to, for me. But then Dangerous came along and I absolutely adored that one. Dangerous. And I listen even now, not right now, but they're on my list of my Amazon music catalogue thing. They're on there. I don't own any recordings, any music at all. It's all streaming now, which is a little bit sad because if I ever couldn't afford the internet or anything like that and I couldn't afford the streaming, I would literally would have nothing to listen to, apart from maybe a radio. But even a radio is digital now, comes via the internet. Wow. But I've really, what I might do in a, in a future boring objects, I'll actually go through the Amazon list. So I've started to save or bookmark the albums and they're all my favourite albums. Like my favouritest albums of all time are on there. Not all of them, but I'm gradually starting to add them. The albums that I've listened to throughout well, the last four decades or whatever. In the 70s, I wouldn't add any because I didn't have... Apart from Grease, that was the only album that I would add from the 70s. Um, unless Elvis's... No, that's that's wrong. The Elvis's Christmas album. And Elvis's greatest hits, but let's face it, any of Elvis's greatest hits I would add, regardless of when they were released. But uh, there's one with a red cover. So I think that was from the 80s though. I might be wrong. The. But his Elv Elvis's Christmas album. Was from 1958 I think. Again. One of my. Favoritest albums of all time. And I listen to it all year round. However strange that might sound. I would sit here on the hottest day of the year. Listening to Chris, a Christmas album. Ho, 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 Christmas without you. See, I don't care. It's like looking out. It's, it's brilliant. Because I just love Elvis and that Christmas album. And I started that tradition in 1991. No, 1990, sorry. 1990, I was staying at my dad's house in the summer. And I used to listen to that album. Uh, I probably a tape tape recorder, a tape. Maybe it might have been a, a vinyl album. I don't know. I remember just sitting back listening to that. It 
was just lovely. It just felt nice. It felt it felt Christmassy, but emotionally Christmassy, which is something I don't really get. I haven't had for decades, not really. So the only time I kind of really feel Christmassy is, or that kind of a bit of that feeling is when I listen to that album, or I watch It's a Wonderful Life. And again, I watch that any time of the year, and it just gives me that nice feeling. They're the two two things that two of the things that really give me that nice feeling. Um, what's the other one? Um, Groundhog Day is another one. It's just it, it's kind of got a bit of everything because it's got snow, so it's kind of winter, but at the same time, it's just a brilliant movie. One of my favourite movies ever. And it's funny. And it's... Uh, Bill Murray is just great. I've always I've been a fan of Bill Murray. Ever since that movie, really, to be fair. He's just got something about him. And also Scrooge was really good as well. Yeah. Well, I don't know how long I've been talking for. Probably an hour or so. so I've been trying to time myself just so I don't go on too long. Ooh! An hour and a half. Blimey. Have I had any phone calls during this period? No. Have I had any emails during this period? No. No. Nothing. Nobody contacting me. Ooh, ee, ooh, ee, ooh. Uh, no, nothing at all. Nothing happening. Has anyone knocked on my door? Mm, nope. No one's knocked on my door either. So, that's good. Facebook, anything on Facebook? Dimitri posts, I wonder who makes these wonderful covers for your videos. Alright, okay. Uh, if you're listening to this, Dimitri, I don't... The covers I make for my podcasts and my videos, I I use a different a couple of different things. I use Canva and I use ChatGPT. And... I basically have to put in what I want the image to be of. So I, I create the image in a sense of what I want it to be. So for example, yesterday's Sunday papers, I wanted a polar bear sitting on a toilet reading newspaper. And that's what I got. And that's what came up. And I was happy with that. You can see his trousers or his pants are down at his ankles. And he's sitting on a toilet reading a newspaper it doesn't always work out so easy so quickly but that was like an easy one to do uh, sometimes I'll do a mixture of different covers different images and put them together so if I want for example a multiple of different uh, animals doing certain things I might make different images take the background out and you know maneuver them so they're in in the image and stuff so it all depends but generally it's it's definitely not my it's not my artistic genius but it is my artistic design or idea rather so I'm the one that puts the idea into the uh, for what I want and then chat GPT gives me what it thinks I want you know based on what I put in or the words I put in or the description um, so yeah that's that's it really and then I use Canva to edit the image so I can get a few images and kind of put them together to make one image so I'll do that sometimes. Uh, I add the logo for the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast. 
and maybe other things, you know, depending on what I'm doing. And that's it, really. That's what I do with. That's how I do the do the images. I mean, it depends. I mean, there are times when I don't do it like that because they don't always give me what I want, so I have to design it myself in a certain kind of way. I'm no artist. I'm no. I don't like as far as illustrations or. Uh, designing images or anything like that but I can design an image by putting things together to create the image I want you know if I know what background I want so if I want a background of a beach I can post that and then if I want to have uh, for example two ducks boxing each other whilst ice skating on the sea which is frozen over you know as an as an example i can add those but then i might have to add the ice skates i might have to add the frozen sea from another picture to put on you know so it's it's just mixing and matching and combining things together but if i can avoid all that and just you know i mean i'll give you an example the the image is gone but i did an um an image of a wrapper on the toilet once years ago and it was quite a good, quite a good image, but it took me absolutely ages to do it because I had to search the internet for images I wanted to use, and then I had to take off little bits of the image and transform it, and just yeah, it took ages. But I was pleased with the end result. Uh, I feel I still got the image somewhere, but I haven't used it. Because it was on my original podcast and then that got taken down because it had music in the background and Spreaker wouldn't allow that. So they actually removed the whole podcast. That's why last year, was it last year or was it a year before? I'm losing track now. No, it was last year, wasn't it? I started using SoundCloud. So I had to upload all the old stuff. And that was... Yeah, uploading all the old stuff. I didn't have all the old images because I'd lost a lot of them. So yeah. But that's it. I hope that made sense. So on that note, I'm going to go. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy and be gentle with yourself lots of love bye relax in a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we've spent together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice 
maybe in a few hours time, perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button, in fact it might have even been a tape, tape recorder, I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words, because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down now now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same so 
some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realise by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing 
I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers <sighs> producing all that life-giving oxygen.
feels nice. to, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing 
allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. Being released from your brain and your mind Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are all 
auch sei. Feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower. slow your stomach Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, 
sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body, tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go.
ever tranquil. sense of letting go even more Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
might have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. to peace Go.
is almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And you give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort.
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind, almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together, almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness. And it feels nice. It really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part 
of your body. Moving down to your eyes. Focusing on your eyes. Noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time. And all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely. Moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth, relaxing, calm and loose, as you focus now on your jaw. Just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears. That whole of your jaw feeling more. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. Experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from the spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back 
relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. Seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are. into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread in your lower back into your hip area start to melt start on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, that they're already feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also Relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message.
into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So, so calm. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gin Focusing now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
tips. to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees so relaxed Muscles and your shins completely
so peaceful. So calm. Letting go of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now from twenty down to one. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. Further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
day. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
and you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in to begin counting down from ten down to one right now ten
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, will you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs? Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. You just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it removes those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joint. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area, very strong, probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. how much they actually do for us all through our lives. It may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. You can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe notice that they are relaxing more. bottoms of your legs, the shins and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating 
straight and across your ankles. So important. And then even its head, even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle, knows how, how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. does so much great work, supports us, supports our body for a lifetime, helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. There's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was like, okay. If I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs and I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet you're probably focusing on them anyway so maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit you can have them in your awareness the same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. Sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And 
and inside your thighs. The bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. It's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. Of course, there's the back of your your knee. You know the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part. That crease your legs, it's almost, it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can of course feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. When you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with the idea of having love for your legs showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, and massage.
massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only 8 stone still a lot of weight these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than 8 stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, my feet also go. Whew, and my toes clap. I'm so happy. Possibly one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say. Possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect they deserve to relax deeply they deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips my hips feel really loose and 
also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair, and there's no stretching, as far as I'm aware that I'm doing, it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much, that there is a natural stretch, as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. You just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. 
You know, even even if this background sounds either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on. There's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle in your body effortlessly. And 
just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love. 
love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts, which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven. Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. And 
going to focus on your hands. It is the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. on your hands and your fingers. There's nothing you needed to be done. There's no clenching of the fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing how they feel. It is the more relaxed your hands feel. that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel
just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling of comfort almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are and that sense of gratitude in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but 
also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day, as your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health, things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to, because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger. longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier when sleeping It's the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. You were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and 
to naturally fall asleep. It is our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, it just feels so nice, it's such a healthy place to be. within you, each and every day, moving forward, you are going to find that you're more relaxed, physically, And 
it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity will disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry, doesn't, it doesn't, des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here, negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax and keep 
choose your path. Drift to sleep. You get me number. You hear me say. as relaxed, or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus. 
voice and your body getting in touch with how you feel physically. And in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body, Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed. Naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus. parts of your body, your focus increases, which actually calms your mind, and when your mind started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. all of the fat, all of everything, every hair in your body is filled with that healing energy. And then your brain filled relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it 
listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is a full sleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, I give the command to your body and I focus on the different parts of your body, and you may start to just drift, and then you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I'm focusing on a different part of your body. yourself drifting, but you won't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting, and you get a vertigo from my voice focusing on a different part of your body. Basically, you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues into sleep. the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands, you may only seem to just know it as one. your right hand start and your left hand end. Almost as if it joins together. Now focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. on your elbows, focusing in on both of your elbows, 
letting you go. start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now 
this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders moving to the muscles of your shoulders And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get in 
into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial for the relaxation. of the muscles in your shoulders. And now as we move down your arms, we'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, I want it to still be attached, and I'll just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists, gently massaging that part, the softer part which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and holding your hand in both of my hands just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly at the same time pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Massaging the muscles 
you are way down to rest. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again with a really big beam. Shoulders and then your neck going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Taking a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside. Massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back. The parts where your arms would maybe rest against. Almost the part that connects your front to your back. And just massaging down firmly but gently as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, yet firm as you choose. And eventually you get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down. do that a few times. Sometimes we can choose the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated.
to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push on one end that side or right on my side to the middle in fact to where your spine is massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing it's almost like kneading bread there's that big area which is firm yet lots there to massage Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from the sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach that has been stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move or move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massaging that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue um, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from the chest so it's all connected the chest from the back they knit together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from the side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle. 
circle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle and as deep as you choose. Now move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from you. Pretty much underneath your arm area really. To your spine. to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging the calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massaging that area. Maybe Lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so that tickle and just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you have to put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. Then moving over 
foot and your left leg to do exactly the same thing. Start in the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you want to, like a bigger future recording, you want to spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving from down your ankle onto your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure, of release that you experience from having your feet massaged, feel Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to back in touch with that area, as you move up, I can clean my hands, they can be fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face, think of Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone.
obviously less than imagining the hole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It feels quite a large area. side to the next, moving the hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. chest, moving down again, moving around the hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach. Starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually the hands moving apart. And massaging and sliding at the same time. Moving down. To just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good in its massage, just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms all the way down to your hips. to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back, I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles in your side, gently massaging. side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button, I'm going to move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, if you do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in your stomachs that you may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button.
gentleness and freedom that comes from being and of being. As I now move down the tops of the thighs, the muscles massaging them, I can do this to the legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in the thighs, the front of the thighs. Massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot on each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. do is blow out some candles from your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow that candle out. Just, just like big blows 
just a gentle combat handle will extinguish. And then I say the next number as we move down and you can just yourself feeling more and more relaxed as you moved to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle sounds at the moment as you can may start to just not even notice them at all because they are got the sounds of the birds as Horace the pigeon likes to say hello sometimes and as the odd plane goes by the traffic and trains in the distance seems important whatsoever.
Introducing the first candle, which is a hundred, the first candle, which is one hundred, but when you blow that Activity grow within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding.
anxious thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide what your body starts to do, because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind, and your mind starts to slow down, and it's a nice feeling, it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax because so often we're busy with going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. do give your permission and you get to say so you can say like hey it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all right the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit down for maybe an hour or two feels blissful and just by sitting there like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind feel prepared evaporate, any tensions can just 
just gradually vanish. Almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more stable and it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself almost like a literal unwinding to allow you to press a button and all the tension just releases it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of the clock just unwinding and it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you re-emerge and listen to me again and then it's just your mind drifting off to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense you're not you may not actually be aware of what you need, what you physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries. touch with the feelings of 
standstill or maybe just much much slower than before because your mind is not really moving and listening to my voice which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind helps you learn more even and powerfully more lucid benefits to the body and the mind and the mind to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones
start focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, and notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this
Christmas. So let's start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move the fingers a little bit. Closing the hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning on your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows just stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squeezing your eyes. Scrunching up the eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. And now focusing thumbs. And I would just like you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper limbs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, your chest and your shoulders, and as you focus now on the back of your neck, maybe we can move our head gently upwards if you're looking up, just maybe moving your head down 
tears, and to move into the pain of empty buttocks, sides of your hips, you can physically
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings of just thinking and thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings in those different muscles and skin the hairs of the arms the any of the internal parts of the arms the veins Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling and it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing or still not Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe find that you move the muscles a little bit. Just to tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference. side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. seemed to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. chest. Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now.
so much of the chest, you see there's the collarbone leading to the chest, you've got the chest bone, you've got the muscles in the chest, and of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts, if you're male, you've got the different, I might not know different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Feeling with whatever feeling there is chest. And I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be in case you know I'm breathing. But yeah, when it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels, it feels okay. bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also working to flex for some reason, actually part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas quite nice actually the good thing about this is you can if you want to you can just flex or skid your legs the various muscles in your body to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that and if you ain't doing it because of I don't know 
Chi with the parent heart of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times. Allow the sound to occur. Be gentle with yourself. Since we started this recording, how calm, how peaceful. Nothing to think about, you're just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation, at the very least for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slowly down. So your body continues to relax. body, maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom, when you start maybe to body and mind, just leaving that there, and imagine it an escape pod, a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and you've got to say, oh, pod, and it sends the pod.
physical sensation. And also in terms of mentally, outside of that, the sucking the tension and the stress and all the numbing feelings that you don't want. is something you would need to really say and really mean at a time when you can maybe sit down maybe just for a few minutes close your eyes just
despite the sorrow, the man said to himself, I will not fear death for I have found you. Yes, I have found you, said the man touched with awe at the success of his mission.